up till now, all of the body composition uh, techniques I've talked about have been uh, considered gold standards at one point in time or currently. Um, these two on uh, this slide, the skin folds is shown here as pinching the skin and measuring the, the skin and fats uh, or biological impedance analysis, BIA, where you use electricity through the body in order to assess body fat. These are not and have never been considered gold standards. These are your field or sort of typical gym-based measurements. These are the most commonly used ones of all the measurements I'm showing uh, on, in this video. Um, so skin folds, probably the most common one, uh, spe uh, especially if you kind of go back in time a little bit uh, where these machines uh, are uh, coming down in price and becoming more capable. Uh, skin folds have been around a lot longer. When doing skin folds, uh, you're going to be, as I already mentioned, pinching the person and measuring how thick that pinch is. Uh, so this is a little dial that has millimeters of thickness on it. And you are gonna do at least three sites. Um, some of the equations out there are gonna be five site equations. Uh, some of the equations are seven site equations. There are sites beyond the seven sites um, uh, equations so that you can do more than seven sites but uh, three, five, and seven site equations are the most commonly used ones. Um, if you practice the technique and you have experience doing, uh, doing it in lots of different people that whose you know, their body tissues have different textures and different feels, uh, you can get fairly accurate with this. So you can get within about 3.5% as a sort of a plus or minus range. That means if you measure them around, say, 10% body fat, they might be somewhere between 6.5% or 13.5%, so plus or minus 3.5%. That'll, that'll be about 68% of the people are in that range. Um, so basically one standard deviation on either side of the, the bell-shaped curves mean, um, for those who've had the statistics already. Um, and so um, fairly accurate, not as good as the gold standard measurements that I've already shown, the DEXA, the underwater weighing, the BOD pod, but fairly accurate in uh, something that is much easier and cheaper to do in a fitness setting. So these calipers, a good set is going to run probably between two and four hundred dollars. Um, compare that to the several thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for the other ones I've shown so far much, much cheaper and more affordable. All right, let's talk about um, bioelectrical impedance analysis or BIA. Uh, this has an accuracy of between 2.7 and 6.3%. Um, it changes based on which study you look at. It doesn't have the issues of having to touch a person or them having to remove clothes in order to get to the various skin fold sites. So that's nice. Um, it, but there are some issues which we'll get to uh, once we quickly talk about how this works. Uh, so as I already mentioned, though, you're going to be sending electricity into the body. It goes up through the body, and this, this is a foot-to-foot -foot version, so it goes up through one foot, down the other foot, and it is sensed in these metal electrodes on the other side. As it goes through the body, um, there's going to be various tissues that have to conduct that electrical current. That free mass is a very good conductor of electricity because it has a lot of water and electrolytes in it. So think uh, muscle uh, in various tissues that are lean tissues like that. They are going to have lots of water in them, so that means they're going to be good conductors of electricity. Fat mass has very little water to it. Um, fat and uh, water don't mix very well. And so it's going to be a very poor conductor of electricity because it's not going to have a lot of water in there. Therefore, it's not going to have a lot of those electrolytes that are in the water typically within the body. And so um, uh, if you just understand this much, uh, lean tissues are good conductors. Fat tissue is a poor conductor of electricity. That means that the less impedance you have to the um, electrical current going through your body, the less body fat you probably have. Um, so that's the sort of basis of this. Some of the issues with this is it's going to be highly dependent on the hydration status of the individual. So if they're dehydrated in any way or even overhydrated, so the opposite end of the spectrum in any way, that's going to cause lots of problems for this measurement, and you're going to be well with, uh, well outside of this standard error, the estimate range that I'm showing here, if you have a hydration issue, so under or over hydrated. So you have to just be sort of you hydrated or normal hydrated. 
Um, so if the person exercises beforehand, if they've been exposed to a lot of heat beforehand, even if they haven't become dehydrated, but they've been exposed to heat and that shifts the fluids to the skin where they're trying, their body's basically trying to dissipate some of the heat, that shift in fluids and where it is in the body is also going to cause some issues with biological impedance analysis. If the person eats and there's a shift of fluids to the abdomen, so blood going to the abdomen to help with um, digestion, also going to cause issues with BIA. So if you follow all the pretesting guidelines, this is about your error range that you're going to have. So plus or minus um, 2.7 to 6.3%. Um, if you don't follow all the pretesting guidelines, biological impedance analysis is probably going to be a useless measurement. Uh, so this is not a measurement that should be done after a, the workout. So you'll see in fitness centers, a lot of times these machines will be just kind of out in the open and people will go work out and they'll try to weigh uh, themselves or jump on the biological impeded scale like this in order to see what their body fat percentage is. It's going to give them a, total, a totally bogus number if they do that. Um, so it's not something you should do post-exercise. So we've talked a lot about different uh, methods of doing body fat percentage assessment. I'll put links in the description below this video on several other videos showing how to do the techniques described in this video.